haven't seen one of these in a while. Weird. You dare awaken the ghost of 90s past? Hey, shit, who are you? Dude, I, I, I just told you I'm the ghost of 90s past. Are you okay? All right, all right, all right. My landlord doesn't let me have guests. I cannot! Wait, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, I'm not actually here, all right? I'm in your head. What? Look, I'm gonna give it to you straight, because it looks like you haven't been playing with a full deck. I did lose my magic cards to that possum. You've been too hard on yourself. You need to pick yourself up, get back into the feel-good attitude. The 90s attitude. Shouldn't I be looking for a better job? This city's expensive. No, no, man. That's the kind of thoughts that's been weighing you down. You need to get back in touch with your inner child. Who told you about that? I think you should finish Sonic. Sonic? You got Sonic 2 right there, but you never finished it. I haven't finished any of them. Well, here's your chance. Sit down, play through the entire classic series. Only then will you get to embrace the true feel-good attitude your heart desires. Can I get a second opinion? No. Well, if that's all it takes to experience your happiness. Coming. Richard! Hey, how you doing, buddy? Not great. Can I play your copy of Sonic 1? I really need to finish it. Yeah, sure. Can I ask why? No. Have a seat. So, how'd you like to play it? Do you want it on the... Well, I... We? We got PS3. Dreamcast. I think... Or we have the GameCube with the Mega Collection. What's your thoughts on the original Xbox? Or we have a PlayStation 2, if you prefer. No, I... Uh... Or if mobile's more speed, we have the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Advance SP. We have the original DS, a DSi. We have a DSi XL, a new 3DS with a Goomba. We have the new 3DS. And we also have a mobile port. You can play it on your smartphone. No. Can we just play it on the original Genesis version? Ah. <sighs> Just as God intended. Right here. So, uh, can we play the game? Sure. But just to be clear, I know nothing about these games. Danita Stokes, president of HAG. It's bad enough that Sega Genesis has the most 16-bit games, but this new Sonic the Hedgehog, oh, he really dusts my doilies. They say he's incredibly fast. Well, what's the hurry, mister? <laughs> And about his attitude. Smarty pants! Why can't it be more like that nice boy Mario? Oh! oh yeah. Little brat! So, Sonic 1. The game that started this horrible, nauseating, distasteful, monstrous, repulsive, creepy, gruesome, obnoxious, loathsome, vile, reprehensible, distasteful, abominable, shameless, scandalous, repugnant, sinful, condemnable, and straight up annoying franchise. Legend has it that this was Sega's Mario. Sega's attempt at making their own mascot for this hit new console. The Sega Genesis. Er, the Sega Mega Drive, if you live across the proverbial pond if it were. And Sega famously settled on a hedgehog called Mr. Needlemouse. So Sonic the Hedgehog is a game about running through all the zones trying to free the flicky animals and stop the nefarious Dr. Ivo Eggman Robotnik. Along the way you must click the six Chaos Emeralds so you can receive the best ending in order to avoid the screen where Eggman taunts you for not being the best boy possible. The game starts out at good old Green Hill Zone. You go through two levels and hopefully collect 50 rings so you can enter the special zone at the end of each level. After you damage your eyes by spinning forever, you can collect one of six Chaos Emeralds. I should mention that the Chaos Emeralds do not do anything in this game but give you a good ending screen. So I didn't collect them all. Sue me. The third level of each stage will result in you taking on Robotnik and saving the trapped flickies. Very cut and dry. Speed through two stages, then take on a boss. Move on, roll credits. Well, I hardly call that realistic. Because the very next stage, Marble Zone, slows you down with more waiting. Sure. Okay. 
it's not that bad. In fact, the next stage, Spring Yard, is fine. It's supposed to be a city that resembles a pinball table. It's simple enough and it's fun to traverse through. However, I hope Satan holds a special place in hell for whomever decided that Labyrinth Zone was an acceptable idea. The horror stories are true, this stage is absolute garbage. Time to completely slow the player down and force them into water, walls, drowning, spikes, fire, spikes, drowning, spikes, drowning, bubbles, drowning, and spikes. And then to top it all off, a boss fight where you don't even need to hit Eggman. You're just supposed to follow Robotnik while dodging the spikes and hazards. Of course, I didn't know this. So I spent a very long time trying to kill the big guy. Then immediately after that, we're right back to a normal level. Like nothing ever even happened? Are you kidding me? Anyways, Starlight Zone and Scrap Brain Zones are fun levels that lead into the final level where you take on Eggman. Just smash your pretty blue face into him a few times and you'll save the day. So yeah, Sonic 1. What do I say about Sonic 1? Okay, well, for starters, the game controls well to be fair. Sure, Sonic is a little stiff, but as far as that goes, it's not awful. If you hold down, you can roll into a ball and gain a decent amount of momentum when you go down slopes. I actually played through most of this game on the Steam release of this game for recording convenience, but I was able to play it with the USB controller that came with my Genesis Mini, which I will try to use for the majority of these reviews. Oh, and I should mention that outside the horrendous labyrinth zone, the thing that annoyed me the most was the spike glitch. I mean, assuming this is a glitch. So when you take damage, you lose all of your rings and are not back. Well, if you land on more spikes with no rings, you will die instantly. So, uh, don't do that. Sonic 1 is fun, but I can definitely see why it's not recalled as fondly as the future entries in the series. But hey, it's the first game. Sonic Team needs time to mature. They can only get better. Hey, wait, this isn't Sonic 2? That's right, it's not, but I think we should talk about it nonetheless. Developed by Ancient Corp, it's the game released for the Sega Master System and Game Gear a few months after the original game on the Genesis. So the story is the same. Travel the six levels, beat Eggnick, and save the day. The last thing I want you to believe is that this is the same game as the Genesis release. It's got its own level design and a few new levels of its own. Of course, they really couldn't avoid including Labyrinth Zone. What are you, crazy? Why? Why wouldn't they include Labyrinth Zone? It's not actually that bad, and it's pretty straightforward. I guess a major difference is that there's still special zones, but they're only for collecting more lives. What the game expects you to do is to scour the stages looking for the hidden Chaos Emeralds. I think I only found one, by accident. I'm not getting all these for this game. I really don't see the value in just a slightly different ending screen. Oh, but I do want to tell you that the controls actually feel better than before. Something about Sonic makes him feel more fluid and precise. I don't know, I really like this one game. This time I went through the Master System port on the Wii Virtual Console. Aside from the frame slowdown in some areas that involve water, I had a good time. I totally recommend playing this if you own a Master System. <laughs> What? Have I been tricked into playing? Okay, so Sonic 2 on the Master System. It's a uh, well developed by Aspect Digital. I firstly gotta say that it controls as well as the first Master System title. In fact, the only poorly controlling part is the hang glider. The game expects you to press left and down rhythmically in order to travel over gaps. It appears in only one level, so whatever. Anyway, Sonic is on an adventure to save his new friend Tails the Fox from Robotnik. You must travel the six worlds in order to stop Eggman from whatever his horoscope suggests he do that morning. Along the way, you need to collect a Chaos Emerald from each Act 2 level in the game. Only then can you access the final level and save Tails. I didn't bother getting the emeralds at all and it looks like Tails dies? Yuji Naka, what the hell is this? If you tried this game before, I guess you'll be familiar with Sonic 2 Master System being one of the hardest Sonic games released. Like I played this game by walking when I could, cause I was always sure that it'd be smacked with a spike pit that I couldn't see. More importantly, why do the spikes look like the grass? So this game has a very strong habit of trying to be a Mario Kaizo hack. 
Like, there are times when you're on a path that will deposit you right into a bed of spikes. At least, the spike glitch isn't an issue anymore. And then there are times when you're riding an elevator. You jump to avoid spikes, and you'll learn that you should have been trusting the game, then you trust the game, only to be shoved into more spikes. And then you realize you should have been trusting the game all over again. A lot of these levels are fine enough, I guess. Don't expect the collision in Sky High Zone to make any sense. The water stage off the lake zone has a habit of not making it super clear that you're underwater, so don't drown. By the way, make sure that you're aware there are hidden paths here to a bonus room where you can drown for the low cost of free! Oh, and don't worry, just green hill zone. Yeah, I don't get why it's the fourth stage. Since there's an abundance of chances to collect lives, it's fairly easier of a course. But it plays you can do anything. That's pretty cool. I think that's the first time we hear that in the Sonic game. I really hope you like tubes, because Scrambled Egg Zone requires that you take the proper turn at the right time, or you'll be gifted a handful of spikes. I, I gotta pull back the curtain here. I'm sorry guys, I made sure to play this game with save states. I really didn't want to be working on this game alone for weeks on end. Generally, I make a rule to do this over official hardware or releases, but if I played this over the virtual console on my Wii, I surely would have gone insane. To the game's credit, most of the boss spices are amusing. You can't be hit more than once, but they're all reasonable challenges. Since Sonic controls very well, they're not as frustrating as the game. Also Silver Sonic, Robotnik's first Sonic OC. Anyway, Sonic 2 on the Master System isn't a bad game. It's an experience that people who want to play but games may enjoy. It just requires a bit of patience, and maybe an unhealthy amount of save states. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is the game that many people hold dear to their hearts. I like to believe that it's because it's the game that Sega packed in with the Genesis. I mean, it's the game that came along with my Genesis. But in reality, it's when Sonic Team really started to understand their design philosophy. While Sonic 2 on the Master System only did this partially, the Genesis release really started to encourage having different level paths. You see, if you take the high path, it's more difficult, but it's faster and more rewarding, while the lower paths are slower and take up more time, and at many points you can fall down into that lower path. So Sonic 2 has a variety of levels that are fun to play through. Emerald Hill is an excellent intro that shows the player how to travel through the game. The rest of the zones like Chemical Plant and Casino Night are very strong ways to show off their themes without going headfirst into a stage like Labyrinth Zone from Sonic 1. You can see it directly with Aquatic Ruin where they only put you in the water for about half the time if you can swap between the lower and high paths. And yes, before you ask, I did fall into the pit in Mystic Cave. Oh, yay! I got it. I should mention the stage I'm sure Sonic fanboys are waiting for. Yes, I had a very hard time with Metropolis Zone. Every time I turned a corner, I was surprised by an enemy. Slicers littered around every corner, exploding starfish pressuring me to move faster or slow down. Sometimes I would just ram Sonic into the spikes myself. I don't know, I just needed to see him suffer more. Now, when you buy the Sega Genesis that comes with Sonic 1, you'll get Sonic 2 absolutely free. Sonic 2 handles stubborn stains, embarrassing bald spots, no problem. It even slices and dices, makes thousands of julienne fries. But wait, you can play it too. This free Sonic 2 is a $54.99 value. You get two Sonics for the price of one. Sonic 2 fits easily into any tackle box. Made from a space-age polymer plastic for years of family fun. And pets love it too. Buy the Sega Genesis that comes with Sonic 1 and get Sonic 2 free. Act now. Wiener Dog Sweater sold separately. Oh right, Sonic 2 is where the series would switch from having 3 stages per zone to just 2 with the boss being right at the end. Something about this just kind of felt right and I'm glad they made this improvement. Stages aren't around long enough to feel stale and we can get moving to the next one. In fact, the final zone is Death Egg Zone, where you must face off against 2 boss fights in order to complete the game. The first one we fight against is Mecha Sonic, who apparently had made its first experience in Sonic 2 on the Master System, but that was a translation error where he was called Silver Sonic? He just kind of moves back and forth, and you'll eventually get a feel for how you're supposed to jump on him. Eggman, however, is a different story. He has built a massive robot called the Death Egg Robot. I went into thinking it would be like the fight from Sonic Generations, where the goal was to get behind it and smack it in the bottom. While this time, you need to jump up and smack it in the chest, but also dodging Eggman's spiky fingers. 
you don't understand. The wind is extremely tiny, and you will struggle to pull this off until you know the exact way to pull off the timing. This boss really doesn't mess around, and yes, I now have the level select code memorized. 19, 65, 9, 17. I never want to do this again. It's an extremely good way to put a sour memory at the end of the game. And now that we've beaten Robotnik and stopped his devious plans on taking all of my money at the casino, we fly home with Tails. Well, I didn't get the good ending. But again, I don't really care. This time the game promises you the ability to go supersonic and just cheese your way through the entire game. How to get the Chaos Emmer dudes? Well, you gotta collect 50 rings and go through a checkpoint and jump through the Ring of Lights. You'll then be transported to the special zone where your goal is to run through a half pipe while collecting as many rings as possible. If you've gotten enough rings, the game will grant you a Chaos Emerald. I really didn't want to complete these, since I felt some major eye strain while playing. It's awkward to control, and getting used to the depth of field is very frustrating. So I guess, on a lighter note, we should talk about something good about the game. For the first time ever, we get to play as one of Sonic's friends. Yay. So we get to explore as Sonic's new best buddy, Tails the Fox. Miles per hour if he's paying his taxes or riding his will. He is given the ability to fly in later games, but here he's stuck to the ground. I know this game and I have a troubled past, but maybe I've been too hard on it. It's still a fun game for most of the adventure. Mega CD. Metal Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog CD from Mega CD. I'm going to say it outright, Sonic CD has my most favorite Sonic game so far in this project. Firstly, if you want to go from point A to point B, you'll have no trouble at all. With the exception of Wacky Workbench, you'll have no issue just going down the regular path. You'll still get the same boss fights just without the true ending. It's fine, I'm glad that this option is there. Okay, so Sonic CD was developed by the other half of Sonic Team. While one half worked on Sonic 2 for the Genesis, this team got to work on a project for Sega's new hardware, the Sega CD. You see, much of the early 90s was game companies trying to get this newfangled disc technology figured out for consumer video game use. Sure, Nintendo already had success in Japan with the Famicom disc, but those were floppy discs. Everyone wanted to push the market towards compact discs. So we had systems like the Sega CD, Panasonic 3DO, Atari Jaguar, Sega Saturn, Philips CDI, Sony PlayStation, Commodore Amiga, Neo Geo CD, and Tandy VIF. I'm sure I don't need to tell you which of those systems did well, and which didn't. So what does the super cool Sega CD have to offer you? Well, for one, there's most definitely a visual bump for the game. The whole experience is stunning. Just look at Sonic run up this wall. And more importantly, CD quality music. The Western soundtrack has a few decent tracks on it, namely the intro theme, Sonic Boom. But the Japanese tracks are downright amazing. Things like Stardust Speedway and Metallic Madness are such a treat to listen to. And all the stages have different themes depending on whether you're in the past, present, or future. Oh, right, we're talking about the game. I was so busy gushing about the musical score, I completely forgot I had to explain the mechanics. So what does time have to do with it? Well, Eggman has created bandit spawners in each level. You must go back in time and scour each level and destroy it. Doing so will create a good future if you go forward in time, or just finish the level in present or past. In order to go through time, you must go through a signpost labeled past or future and maintain a consistent speed. Alternatively, you can collect 50 rings and pass through the ending sign into a giant ring. In these special zones, you can destroy flying UFOs in order to be given a cat, I mean, time stone. If you collect all the time stones or create a good future in each zone, you'll get a good ending. Sounds easy enough, right? I gotta tell you that some stages, it just doesn't hit that well. Stages like Quartz Quadrant really didn't want me to find the robot spawner, and Wacky Workbench is just the worst. You're constantly bound from the bottom of the stage to the top over and over again while trying to dodge electricity. It's it's just not fun to deal with. I also suppose it's important to say that the 2011 port of the game to PC requires you to travel at a consistent speed for a longer period before going through time. Something that gets rather annoying at water stages like Tidal Tempest. Ah uh, yes. We get a new friend in Rosie the Rascal, who is later called Amy Rose in future titles. She's got an obsession for Sonic, but she's been kidnapped by Metal Sonic, Robotnik's latest OC, the fan favorite for good reason. He's well designed and has a fun boss fight that plays more like a stage where you race to the end. It's taken them way too long to think to design a boss fight like a race in a Sonic game. And no, I do not count Labyrinth Zone Eggman. 
Okay, something I think I really need to address for this title before we move on. I played the 2011 release of Sony CD. If you play any version, you really should just do this one. It plays in 16x9 and much of the game controls and feels much smoother. I first played this title on the GameCube release of the Sonic Gems Collection, which was just a port from the PC release. I gotta tell you, it had really messed up audio. Just listen to those rings crunch. Don't even bother with this one. It controls poorly, the screen is too small for an exploration design game, and the soundtrack just isn't as good overall. You see, the 2011 version was ported by Christian Whitehead to a Star Engine, who would also go on to port Sonic 1 and 2 for mobile. I should be playing this game on the Sega CD, original PC release, or even the GameCube release, but I assure you, without a doubt, I cannot recommend those versions at all. I know without even playing the Sega CD version that I wouldn't enjoy it. And here's my thought. I don't think Sonic 2 is amazing, but it's still a fun game. But I can't imagine I'll be giving Sonic CD a good opinion if I had only played the standard version. You can play Sonic 2 at roughly the same quality or better wherever. Sonic CD is only fun on one port. Also, side note Mr. Whitehead, please update the Steam version. It likes to crash if it's not in window mode. Maybe put the config menu in the game, not a separate application. Amazingly, the universe began in chaos. Things were fast. It was cool. Over the years, that chaos would take many forms. But one thing it's never become is portable. Introducing new Sonic Chaos for Game Gear. Chaos with rocket shoes. Chaos with pogo springs. Chaos with Sonic or Tails. Chaos improved. New Sonic Chaos only on Sega Game Gear. Sega! So let's make a quick stop by the Game Gear and Master System once again. Sonic Chaos is a lot like the previous 8-bit titles. However, this time you have the option to play as Tails as well as Sonic, even including the Super Peel Out from Sonic CD. Once again, Aspect has developed another one of Sonic's many adventures and I think they did pretty well at that. In short, it's not hard at all and it can be beaten within an hour. Good, that's exactly what I expect from a title for this platform. No more of that extremely difficult 8-bit Sonic 2 nonsense. Um, there isn't much for me to say about this title. Uh, they added rocket shoes for Sonic to use as a power-up, and if you can collect 100 rings, you can go to the special stage in order to get a Chaos Emerald. There is no Super Sonic, this is just for getting the best ending. Okay, this. This is my childhood Sonic game. I used to awkwardly play this game on my PC as a kid with a keyboard. I still have the disc. I decided not to play this version for the purposes of this video. Not because people say that it has a different soundtrack, but because of recording reasons. Sonic 3 is largely the fan favorite game in the series. When people talk about Sonic games being good in the Genesis, they were referring to this game. And I mean, can you blame them? Vibrant colors, improved sprites, creative 3D death, new power-ups, fun boss fights, I could keep going. Oh, and Sonic even has a new ability in the Insta Shield. It lets him block some attacks as well as extending the range of his damage. Anyway, Sonic and Tails are headed to Angel Island. Since Sonic has the Chaos Emeralds from his previous adventure, he goes Super Sonic as he comes on the land and is intercepted by Knuckles the Enkidna, who then steals all the emeralds away from him. Knuckles is working with Eggman in order to impede Sonic as he travels throughout the zones. Of course, when it comes to, we see that we can collect Chaos Emeralds once again if we find the giant rings at each of the stages. Here you'll be tasked with collecting each of the blue spheres in order to obtain the emerald. You can get them more quickly by only getting the spheres on the outside of the square. I really do not care for this special zone. It's not bad, but it's not nearly as fun as Sonic CD's special zones. We even have new power-ups to play with. Of course we have invincibility and speed shoots again, but now we can play with the lightning, fire, and bubble shields. They all act like a shield from the previous titles, but they also let you interact with the elements differently. The fire shield makes you immune to fire moves, lets you stand in lava, and lets you dash forward in a fire attack. Really lets you get some distance. The bubble shield not only has the best sound effect in the game, it lets you bounce up and down from a vertical height and lets you breathe underwater indefinitely. Something that's a super great blessing for the Hydro City Zone. 
And the last shield is the Lightning Shield. It allows you to double jump and attracts rings to Sonic as he passes by them. It's easily my most favorite shield to use. So zones follow the same trend as the previous titles. Green forest areas that turn to ruins and heavily industrialized factories. I feel that some of them, like Carnival Night Zone and Marble Garden Zone, are a bit too long. But that's just me getting mad that I timed out in Carnival Night. Oh right. The cool thing is that now each stage has a mini boss at the end of each act. So we will fight with one of Robotnik's goons, then a tussle with the big egghead himself. I think it's a lot of fun. The final stage has to stop Eggman from launching his death egg once again. After he's defeated, Sonic will watch as the death egg plummets from the sky. Much of Sonic 3 is a clear improvement over the previous titles. I don't really care for a lot of the special zones, but it's a clear favorite among fans. What could Sonic Team possibly think of next? Having some trouble with the water level in Sonic. Yeah, Labyrinth Zone's kinda bad. No, I finished that one with Jeremy, actually. I'm talking about the one from Sonic 3, Hydrocity. Oh yeah, that one's not so bad. You just get a bubble shield and... Wait, did you say... Did you say Hydrocity? Yeah, that's how it's pronounced. Hydrocity. No, it's Hydro City. That sounds dumb. What do you mean it sounds dumb? Do you hear yourself right now? Yeah, it's Hydrocity. It's Hydro City! We're making another quick stop by the Game Gear. Aspect has created yet another beloved title for the portable system. Yes, they still really enjoy pipes and tubes. It's another fairly easy trek for a boy Sonic and Tails. This time we'll throw hands with not only Eggman, but also Knuckles and Knack the Weasel. I don't want to spend too much time on this title, since it largely doesn't do anything important, but it's not nearly as much of a challenge as Sonic 2 8-bit. Finding the 6 Chaos Emeralds just requires you searching through the stage for the Emerald Monitor. If you want another easy Sonic title, this one is a good choice. Hydro City! Hydro It sounds cooler! It's Hydro City! There's a space! It's a hydrosity, only the low select. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Hedgehog pasta new from Franco American. God. What are you playing for lunch? Sega released one last Sonic game for the work to the bone Genesis. Sonic and Knuckles is a sequel to our hero's adventure in Sonic 3. You can even see the Death Egg crashing into Angel Island on the title screen. Once again, Eggman's continuing his evil plans and Knuckles is still meddling with your progression. We start out on my favorite zone. Mushroom Hill. I just love how the season changes as you move through the stage. I'm actually really awful at beating this Robotnik fight. I, I, th I think I should mention that the stages in Sonic and Knuckles just kind of flow better. You move from area to area much more cohesively. Well, Sandopolis does stick around a little too long. After defeating Robotnik at Lava Reef Zone, you come through the Hidden Palace. Eggman steals Master Emerald while you're having a tussle with Knuckles, who had believed you were going to try and steal the Emerald. Knuckles then opens up the way so you can chase down Eggman. Now before we go into Eggman's final stage, as usual, we make a stop by Sky Sanctuary Zone. Play around some teleporting beams, then we blow up another one of Eggman's Sonic OCs. The sky is really weird. Taking advantage of the power of the Master Emerald, Robana takes control of this giant robot to try and defeat you. How nice. As per tradition, the Foolish Scientist is knocked down and defeated once again. So as you know, this is a continuation of Sonic 3, sporting the same mechanics, power-ups, and sprites as before. But new to the game once you play as Knuckles, you can go on your own adventure to take on Eggman, break through rocks, and glide as the powerful Echidna. Is there anything this game can't do? I'm having the worst time. What do you mean? Everyone loves these games. I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. Something just feels unfinished. Well, you do know that you can combine them, right? What? Yeah, so Sonic 3 actually pairs with Sonic and Knuckles. What? Yeah, dude, it's locked on with technology. You can actually combine the two incomplete Sonic games into one whole one.
went to the big guy. We laid the whole thing out for him. We told him we had this great idea for a new game called Sonic and Knuckles. It's Knuckles in his own game. Plus, it has new technology. Lock-on technology. So you can play Knuckles in Sonic 2 and 3. It's revolutionary. He just laughed at us. So we sold the whole thing to Sig? Who's laughing now? Batman! <laughs> Sig. That's right, with the power of lock-on technology. We can pair Sonic the Hedgehog 3 with Sonic and Knuckles to create Sonic 3 and Knuckles. In all seriousness, we can now play all the stages in their proper order in one cart. Play the whole adventure as Knuckles and find new pathways in the first half of the game that you couldn't without Knuckles. I do want to mention that this is how you save your progress in Sonic and Knuckles. You see, Sonic 3 has the game save battery, while Sonic and Knuckles doesn't have one. Like, saving on the cart should have been standard for games by the time even Sonic 1 came out. There's no reason for Sonic 2 or Sonic & Knuckles to be unable to save. Speaking of Sonic 2, you can actually plug in Sonic 2 into Sonic & Knuckles in order to play Sonic 2 & Knuckles. Basically, you get to play the entirety of Sonic 2 with Knuckles. It's a neat bonus, but it also doesn't work with Sonic 1, which will just give you more Blue Sphere missions. One last thing I want to bring up before moving on is Sega's hesitance to sell this game. I recorded these games separately on the PS3 Sonic Collection, but I recorded them together on the Steam release. Sega has a really inconsistent habit of selling this game in Sonic Collection either separately, as one title, or straight up not at all. Sonic 3 & Knuckles is completely absent from the Genesis Mini for whatever reason. People say it's because of music copyright, but I don't buy that. Sega can definitely afford to sell their own games one way or another. And with that, we move on from the Sega Genesis. Are we ready for new and more powerful consoles? Well, uh, kinda. ...machine has appeared in homes across America. Double and redouble his power. Six times more powerful than 3DO. Alright, baby. 40 times more than Super NES. Hey, yo, there is no 32-bit Super NES. Are we gonna see the games or what? Show them! Increase the power of the power of the power of the Thank you. So, if you're a complete Sonic fanboy like myself, you're probably aware of the prototype game for the Genesis called Sonic Crackers. What a goofy name. Anyways, the prototype as you play is Sonic and Tails who are both tethered together by an imaginary rubber band, more specifically illustrated by two rings and a magic string. So if one character launches forward, the other will follow. If you stop, the second character will pull you with them. You can get some fun height with this. The demo is extremely buggy and silly, but it's got some nice sprite work. It even has a makeshift overworld for you to play with. So the next Sonic title was released not on the Genesis, but on Sega's new 32X, an add-on for the Genesis. You slap this bad boy on top like a tumor, and you can really feel the power of Sega. Yeah, we weren't ready to move on to the Saturn just yet, even though it was out and available for purchase at that point. No, you had to plug the 32X, which worked in tandem with the Genesis. It was inserted into the cartridge port and had to use the video cable from the Genesis into the 32X, then into the TV. Digital Foundry has an excellent video on all the 32X games, and they do well showing the different layers are rendered by each system. This along with the Sega CD made the Genesis look like a huge mess of wires and add-ons that all required their own individual power cable. There were only like 5 games that even supported all 3 parts, but this mess alone would keep me wanting to keep it all plugged in once it was set up. Even other companies saw the issue and sold their old all-in-one systems like the CDX and the JVC XI, which basically mashed all the consoles in the one. Sega, I know we're speaking in hindsight, did you really have to be doing this while trying to push your new Saturn console? Okay, so there's only one Sonic title in 32X, and that's Knuckles Chaotix. Wait, Sonic isn't even here? How is this a Sonic game? No, he's at the good ending screen of Tails. And look, our bad guy's Eggman in his favorite OSC. This has to be a 2D Sonic game. The plot involves all of our characters just happen to be coming to the opening of a new amusement park on Carnival Island. Of course, Robotnik's trying to find a power and will fuel his new whatever doomsday machine. Okay, the stories in the English localizations are not nearly as concrete as the Japanese. Like, the English version of CD uses stuff from the Sad AM Sonic cartoon. Look, it's not important. We have to enjoy the power of the 32X. Much like Sonic Crackers, your two characters will be tethered with magic power rings, letting you play with all the physics the Genesis 32X can offer. The problem is that I really wish you had more control. Like way too often, I'd be flung in any wayward direction while trying to use my momentum to proceed through the stages. Maybe the tethering could have been a fun multiplayer mechanic? It just plays very awkwardly. 
New power-ups include a blue ring, which will make your rings drop in massive chunks rather than individuals when hit, and power-ups that cause you to grow or shrink. Neither of these are useful and more of a hindrance at best. At least the shield is here and it works as well as it always has. I suppose I should discuss the new characters. In the absence of Sonic and Tails, Knuckles takes on the role of the top billing actor. Along with Mighty the Armadillo, Espio the Chameleon, Charmy the Bee, Vector the Crocodile, Heavy the Robot, and Bomb the Bomb. Wow, wow. Sonic Team was really trying to create more marketable friends for Sonic. Oh boy, I can't wait to play the adventures of Charmy the Bee. Each of these characters has their own special move, and playing as your favorite is rarely hard to get a hold of. I know Knuckles can glide and climb walls, but well, apparently Charmy Bee can just straight up fly, which I feel defeats a ton of platforming. I usually played as Mighty, due to his ability to quickly scale vertical walls, and keep me from playing within the constraints of the power rings. Speaking of stage design, oh boy, we've got some stage design! Much like Sonic City, you've got another 2D game with greater emphasis on exploration. Except you're not exploring, you're just trying to get from the start to wherever the end may be. There isn't anything like Sonic City where you're trying to get from the past or future and destroy badnik generators or metal sonic projectors. While Sonic City is perfectly playable as a game if moving from one side of the stage to the other, Chaotix will have you try and mostly navigate either a maze-like combination of platforming or try and have you move up to the top of the stage. I should mention that each zone has 5 stages to complete, and you fight Eggman at the end of the zone. Oh, and each stage is randomly selected with a roulette, which is really weird. It doesn't have an impact on the game, and I just find it unnecessary, considering we don't get to see the progression between each act of the stage. At least they're colorful and vibrant, so defeating every level will result in our return of our best friend Metal Sonic. He will come and try to take over the stage selector. You must hit the button so that the roulette lands on the X, otherwise you will use an attack. Hit this X enough, and move on to his next phase. Metal Sonic uses the power gems and becomes one giant red robot. He looks pretty cool to me, not gonna lie. But he's painfully easy, just dodges attacks while striking his limbs and core until he's dead. It's a visually impressive fight for 1995, but it's not really challenging. Anyways, you know the deal. We're gonna need to collect the plot MacGuffins in order to get the good ending. Keeping within the general idea of special zones, we're going to have to collect 50 rings and jump into the giant ring at the end of the stage. I think I could get some flack for this, but while the main stages of Knuckles Chaotix are boring and flow very poorly, I think the special zones are the best in any Sonic game thus far. Your goal is to travel through it too with varying obstacles while collecting enough blue spheres to collect the, uh, chaos rings, while also acquiring enough rings in order to keep your timer up. Unfortunately, you can abuse this because however many rings you enter the stage with is the amount the timer starts with, which can make it tremendously easy to win sometimes. And while sure, it might be easy this way, it's still a fun stage regardless that will punish you if you just chuck your body over the edge. In fact, if you already have all six chaos rings, you can still return to the special zone through other acts and play a more difficult wireframe mode. These stages are identical to the previous stages and it's very hard to see pets. I really think they did overall well with the special zones this time, while trying to keep their trend of super trippy visuals and colors in the background. It's too bad that the rest of the game is lacking. I'd recommend this game for the boss fights and special zones, but not the core stage progression. This game is not worth the investment of being a Genesis amalgamation. So, how are the games going? They're awful. This has been a huge waste of time. No, I'll tell you what's awful. What's awful is that all five of my viewers aren't even subscribed. I spend so much time on these videos. I gotta write it. I gotta come up with ideas shots. He really likes to hear himself talk, huh? Yeah, I do. Is he gonna be done anytime soon? The way I see it, he'll be happy if even one person subscribes because of this video. Shouldn't I be trying to invest my time into doing something more important than making crappy internet videos on YouTube? Right? 90s Ghost? And, and, and I spend so much time, my actors don't know what they're doing. Hey man, get portable. Get a Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack. A color portable Game Gear, carrying case, and two hit games. Sonic 2, and the Majors Pro Baseball. Whoa, you can save 50 bucks. The Game Gear Supersonic Sports Pack. You know who makes it. Coffee? Tea? Dig up! This is going to be another short game on the Game Gear. However, we're going to be here for the next few titles, so strap in. So, Tail Sky Patrol is a simple Game Gear game released in 1995 exclusively in Japan. The evil witch cart and her gang of... Fock-y-wolf? Folk-wolf? 
Bear Anger and Karotia are terrorizing Tails' at home. The plot isn't important, so I'm gonna move on to the gameplay. The game doesn't really fit the bill of much of the classic Sonic games, but it includes classic Tails, and it's really not long enough to justify setting it aside for just a spin-off video. What Tails must do is travel across the stage with a ring rotating around him. By pressing down the attack button, you will cause the ring to spin around, and then you can release the ring to throw it. The ring can hit enemies and block attacks. I know he's supposed to be raising his index finger, but it totally looks like Tails is flipping us off. The goal is to use your ring to latch on the objects to collect points and maneuver through the stage. If you hit a wall, you will instantly fail, so interacting with an object that adjusts your elevation is important. If you get hit, you will fall a little. If you have less health, you will fall for a longer amount of time, which can cause you to hit the ground and fail in small corridors even if you have enough health. This all meshes very well for a short arcade-like game for a handheld. It's a good time to pick up and put down every once in a while. I'll give the game some criticism in that the boss fights are only okay. What you need to do is pick them up with your ring by hovering over them, or catching them in the orbit. Then slam them into walls or the ground. You can make a chain to get some quick boss defeats if you're patient, but the bunny boss is really annoying to catch and finish. You must stun her with your ring attack like the other bosses, and then catch her with your ring orbit, and then somehow find something to hit her into. Also be sure to keep dodging carrot attacks, because that will constantly mess up your pursuit. The other three bosses are easy enough including the fight with Witchcart. Tales of Sky Patrol isn't going to wow most people today, but for a 1995 Game Gear title, it's really not a bad experience. Probably one of the better arcade style games for the handheld that I've played. Anyways, next we have an entry that is one I've got a ton to say about, and it still stars our favorite fox. Day six of the Kowalski family vacation. All but young Sam were hovering on the brink of insane boredom. I haven't tried this color yet. Sam had discovered the challenges of playing Sega Game Gear with games like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Sonic Triple Trouble, and The Lion King. His sisters, however, found sanctuary in art. Huh? Sega Game Gear and game cartridges, each sold separately, batteries not included. So Tales Adventure is another Game Gear game created by Aspect. We have another attempt by Sega to build upon the expanding world of Sonic titles, taking place on Cocoa Island where Tails lives and has his own laboratory. Of course, there's an explosion and our new baddies are introduced to us. The Battle Cuckoo are looking for the Chaos Emeralds on the island, because apparently they've been there since ancient times. I'm so confused how many Chaos Emeralds exist in this universe. Anyways, in our adventure, Tails must explore the island looking for the Chaos Emeralds and taking back his home. When we finally reach the end, take on the Battle Cuckoo's son and then the father, easily dispatching the rambunctious Royal Robins. Tails saves the island and peace and serenity returns. Not a complicated story, right? Well, you should know that this is easily one of the longest titles in all of classic Sonic. So, Tails' adventure, as I'm sure you can see by now, is slow. It's not just a normal slow-ass 2D game you find on discount for the NES. No, I mean this is a side-scrolling adventure game, where you as Tails must thoroughly explore each and every area while collecting items that can be used to bring back the previous areas to unlock even more areas. That's right, Tails the Vox starred in his very own Metroidvania. Now the game does a few things pretty well. The platforming is fine and moving tails generally goes pretty easily. The ability unlocks are all fun ideas that use puzzles that rarely feel cheap or obnoxious. There was a ton of really solid groundwork here. I think if this game wasn't on the Game Gear, it may have had much more potential. As it is with a lot of handheld games, the screen is far too crunched in, which makes for some extremely awkward boss fights and very tiresome exploration. Not to mention that a massive limitation of handheld games at the time was game saving. This game is what I believe is the only Sonic game with any sort of password saving system. And make sure you write those passwords down, kids. At the very least, a game over does let you continue your game. So I don't know if it was a limitation of some kind, but you can only bring four tools at a time. Meaning you need to backtrack the tails of the lab each and every time you're faced with a wall in your path. I would score this game tremendously higher if I could have access to any of the items at any time. Especially because some of them are just redundant like different types of bomb, or the fact that your hammer has such a tiny range in front of it for hitting items and obstacles. I really wish it felt better, but Tails just kind of locks himself into the animation and it just feels cheap. Like I got used to attacking like this, but it gets really awkward, especially when you're trying to do the final boss fights and you're just sliding bombs all over the floor. 
And while bombs may be the primary tool of attacking in this game, which also feels stilted by the way, you're going to be spending a ton of time exploring crawl spaces with your remote robot. This is such a great mechanic. It's really just Morph Ball Samus, but the robot can fly and walk over spikes. It works really well and I think it's easy to use to solve puzzles. Tails actually gets to pilot a submarine and explore the depths of the ocean. The remote robot will transform and Tails will jump in. It just gets awkward when you need to switch back to the lab in order to go to the land levels and then back to the sub to do the water levels. Anyways, the submarine levels are easily the most poorly designed sections of the game. Of course, you'll need to return back to the lab when you realize you cannot progress through some of the paths. So you'll need to draw and guess for a while which items will work over several return trips. Then realize that the spark item that has been giving little Timmy a seizure for the past hour actually is a complete waste of time. You need to obtain the extra armor, which completely just makes you immune to everything underwater once activated. That's it. Just invincibility. No cost. No cooldown. Nothing. Great game. Oh, uh, yeah. So, Tales Adventure. It's really not a terrible experience compared to a few of the games we're looking at today. Again, for a handheld Metroidvania, it's kind of impressive. But in 1995, Sega should have known better. Don't worry though, this is the last time I stick up for a handheld Sonic title in this video. Summer, a cool candy treat is yours at the push of a button. The new Sonic Blast. Blended smooth with your choice of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Oreos, M&M's, or Butterfingers. They make great Sunday toppings, too. Sonic, your summer flavor play. Holy Steven Merchant, what have I fooled myself into playing? I'm not going to even waste my time looking into what the story is this time. It's Sonic vs. Egg Butnik. You know the drill. So for their final Sonic game, the folks at Aspect gave us this gift. A clunky frame dropping, screen crunched, needlessly boring, pre-rendered, piece of trash I wouldn't wish upon anyone, not even an enthusiast. In a way, I guess it's a testament as to how solid the Genesis titles were. I'm gonna spoil the later games in this list, but this is the only not even tolerable Sonic game here. It's shocking considering the massive amount of Sonic games in the 3D area that are barely a functioning experience. Sega, the reviews write themselves. What is going on? I'm not even needed this time. You can look at some gameplay footage and just know not to touch it. Okay, so Corporate wants me to say some good things about this title. Uh, jeez. It's cool that they use pre-rendered graphics and models on a handheld game. Um, the boss fights are passable. Uh, our buddy Knuckles gets to come along again. Sonic has a double jump. I think this is the first game where he gets one. We can just move on at this point, but say goodbye to our boy Sonic. It looks like this will be the last time we see him like this for another 15 years. 90s Ghost? Why are you making me do this? All of these games are crap! What are you talking about? These are from the best years of gaming! All Sonic Team was released crap for a straight decade. You can't expect me to believe that they would release anything competent in the 2000s. <laughs> Just you wait. The best is yet to come. You know what? I'm done with this. What? What do you mean? You can't just quit. I don't have to. You're fired. What? D I Fine. Whatever. Have fun with your finding yourself or something. I live in a basement storage. There's only one thing cooler than Sonic. Two Sonics. In a time-bending thriller so big it will take two to take it on. Double the Sonics means double the adventure. Two ways to play. Twice the fun. Sonic Generations. Pre-order for bonus content at GameStop. Ready for everyone. So it's uh, been a minute hasn't it? This is the point where classic Sonic has disappeared. Sega has fully brought our disgusting little freak into the third dimension, ripped straight from his cozy little two-dimensional womb, birthing him into the harsh, cruel world of Dreamcast, and as Sega would let the world kick its unwanted orphan down the staircase that is the 2000, we get to see how our blue buddy grows into his uncomfortably large shoes. While we had the adventure series, gave a hedgehog a gun, even had some awkward forced romance plot, and many more stories over the next decade, Sega had to face the facts. People didn't enjoy the 3D Sonic games. They were buggy, awkward messes that only hit the right notes 50% of the time. But one thing everyone could cling to was, at least the 2D Sonic games were good. God, the first three Sonic games were great! Sonic CD was a great time. Knuckles get Ox is a hidden gem on the 32X. I remember how cool Sonic was on the Mega Drive. Sega realized they had gold on their hands. 
they finally moved on from their collection of Sonic games they had been reselling. In harness the nostalgia pandering, Nintendo had long been using to sell Mario 3 cameos. And while I'm not going to get into the modern Sonic stuff yet, this will be the first time we're going to see Sega attempt to market Sonic like this. So it's 2011, right? Sonic Team has had a rough decade. Sonic 06 with a bust, the storybook trilogy ended with only two games, and no one wants to see a gun anywhere near Shadow ever again. But Sonic Team finally had a winning formula from Sonic Unleashed, one that was even more improved in Sonic Colors. Then we got Sonic Generations, the game celebrating 20 whole years of the Hedgehog. 20 whole years of clumsy disappointment. 20 years of agonizing internet subhuman cult. Sonic Generations takes place on Sonic's birthday. All his friends have shown up to eat chili dogs and talk smack. I don't want to discuss the modern stuff because that's really not important. Like that's not what this video is about. You know that at this point. As soon as you start the game, we're thrown to everyone's favorite green hill zone. And everyone gets chucked through time by Eggman and it's up to us to finish stages based on the games from the past 20 years. Now a lot of the stages from Sonic 1, 2, and 3 are exactly as you imagine from the classic Sonic games. Just a trip through Green Hill, Chemical Plant, and Sky Sanctuary. Then we will fight with the Death Egg robot from Sonic 2. The rest of the game is extremely creative. We get very interesting stages that are interpreted from the original 3D source material to a 2D format. While we don't get any more fights exactly, it's really fun to see how some things are reapproached. I will mention that the Metal Sonic fight you get is a complete joke and definitely needed more fan service. But more on that later, as I largely do believe that the majority of this game is still a 3D Sonic game. Even most of the boss fights are 3D with modern Sonic taking most of the spotlight as the focal point of the story. I should mention that everything is here if you want classic Sonic. Sure, Sonic absolutely feels different than classic Sonic used to, but it's really not a huge deal. And if you want extra things to do, there are many side missions for classic Sonic. I just don't think we need to spend any more time on this chapter because the majority of classic Sonic is done very well, and I really do think that this game is worth playing. Jeremy, you called me? Richard, my friend. I actually want to give you a Christmas gift this year. Really? Do I actually get to sleep somewhere other than the basement? No, of course not. Oh. Can I ask why? Because I need someone to watch my stuff. Oh well. I feel bad. I didn't get you anything. That's fine. I'm more than happy to be your generous benefactor. I sleep in the basement. And you're very welcome. So, anyhow. I got you this. Oh. Let's see. Sonic Mania? Classic Sonic game? Made in 2017? Yeah, so this is actually the first Sonic game not made by Sonic Team, Sanzaru, Aspect, or Dimps. I haven't heard of any of those. Most people haven't. So yeah, this is actually an official Sonic game made by people who used to make Sonic fan games. Oh. Well, I don't have anything but my old Genesis. That's fine, you can play it on my Switch. Really? Can we play it now? Yeah, sure. But, just keep in mind, I don't actually know anything about these games. Right. Now, when you buy Sonic Mania Collector's Edition, you get the Sonic Mania Collector's Edition statue absolutely free. Alone on a Friday <laughs> night? No problem. Sonic Mania Collector's Edition handles stubborn stains. It even comes with a gold ring for that special someone in your life. She said yes. Congrats, you two. But wait, it comes with a game, too. To get Sonic Mania, just log on to the World Wide Web, download, and play. Sonic Mania Collector's Edition easily holds any tackle box. Made from a space-age polymer cardboard for years of family fun. Sonic Mania is humanely raised, free-range, and organic. And chefs love it, too. Mmm, look at that sizzle. Buy the Sonic Mania Collector's oh. Edition for the ultimate celebration of past and future. Sonic Mania Collector's Edition, available now for a limited time only. Egg heads sold separately. It's here! The messiah of the Sonic fans has delivered. Sonic Mania has come to appease the masses and spread the good word. Rejoice, for the angel shines high in the sky, directing us to the grace that is Christian Whitehead. So Christian went to Sega and pitched his own game. He's shown his competency in the past, but I guess why not? Give him a game. Sega's got enough pachinko money to throw around anyways. And after much anticipation, we finally received the new classic Sonic title. And I can finally tell you all what everyone else said about the game three years ago. What you already know. It's good. It's not just good. It's the best 2D Sonic game without a doubt in feels amazing. Every piece of the game is dripping with fan service, hot and sweaty fan service, and not the kind you'd be afraid to show at grandma during dinner time, but the kind of game you'd be able to call up your friend from third grade and be like, dude, they made another game with Mighty the Armadillo in it. I mean, uh, Sonic Mania is great. 
everything from the music, the controls, the level design, the boss design, everything just flows amazingly in words I can't describe. Well, I can describe some things. Sonic gets this new ability called the Drop Dash, where you charge a dash and release it when you hit the ground. I hope you like the Game Gear's excessive multipath tubes, because they made sure to bring them back in Chemical Plant Zone. Eggman has easily been my most favorite. He's never looked so goofy. He looks like a Saturday morning cartoon villain. He's just so bouncy. I love how the special stages are a mix of all the best parts of the special stages of the past. Meeting my love of the Knuckles Chaotic stage was the challenge of the Sonic CD UFO chases. They even brought on Bean the Dynamite, Fang the Sniper, and Bark the Polar Bear as mini boss fights. And oh man, if you like the challenge of Blue Sphere, this game has got you covered. It's optional and that's the way I personally like it. But if you want to collect everything, be my guest. This game has literally everything any Sonic fan could want. When the Metal Sonic fight was a massive homage to the Metal Sonic fight from Knuckles Codex, I was in pure awe and amazement. Like Mr. Whitehead came to me from a dream. I mean, look at the tiny silver Sonics he just throws at you. I am sorry. I'm getting very carried away. So with Sonic Mania, you can cruise through a set of zones until you defeat Eggman and save the day. Along the way, you go through several stages that you should all know from previous games like Green Hill, Chemical Plant, and Flying Battery. And while many of these zones are similar to the original form, some of these have their own fresh layout, making for a very exciting experience. Or they have fun spins, like what if Oil Ocean was on fire? And yes, only four of the 12 zones are new to the series. It doesn't change much, it's still a fantastic time regardless. And hey, if you get all the Chaos Emeralds, you can fight against the true final boss. Eggman has been listing the help of the hard-boiled heavies, and of course, the heavy king betrays him once he gets a hold of the Phantom Ruby. If you can take him down, you'll be pulled into a portal. Stopping Eggman, but leaving the whereabouts of Classic Sonic unknown. But let's not dwell on that. There's still more content to explore. So part of the DLC expansion for this title, we get to play as our good old buddies, a mighty armadillo. God, oh God, just look at you. As beautiful as the day we lost you. And Ray the Flying Squirrel. You, uh, are, um, yeah, who are you? Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh God, I have to play this for the 3D Sonic video. Great. So Mighty Control is a lot like the other Sonic characters, but he gets a very abrupt ground smash that is immune to Spike. And Ray, well, if you can play Super Mario World and can handle the cape, you can handle Ray just fine. In fact, Ray absolutely destroys a lot of this game as you can make massive distance. The likes that make speedrunners giddy with excitement. I should mention that the Encore stuff is the new meat of this expansion. So you'll basically start out with the character of your choosing, then collect the other four as you play, with the next one in line following you through as your partner. When you lose a life, you'll just move over to the next character. If you run out, then that's game over, of course. But you can always continue from that stage. Just have one character for you to try and claw through. It really rewards you in this mode for keeping your lives. Ooh, and check out the new special minigame. I know how much you Sonic fans love pinball tables. And oh my god, I was wondering where the Knuckles Chaotix reference was. I can't believe you left it there. And I know, I have one more game to mention. But I really just want one more playthrough of this amazing game. Sonic Mania Plus is the pinnacle of the Sonic series, and it's almost bittersweet how much it calls back to all the fans that have grown up with Sonic a lot the way. It looks like the game was a glowing success, and I hope so you can see that this is what the fans want to see more of. But I think we can do without the fan service. I think it's time for a good game without callbacks as expected, right? Sega, please don't release one right after this game. This is amazing! I had no idea anyone could make a Sonic game this great! And that's why I knew how to get it for you. Oh, everything makes so much sense now! 90s Ghost was right! 90s Ghost? The spirit of the 90s! Everything he was trying to teach me about, the wild, let loose, try anything atmosphere. God, everything was so bad, because they kept trying new things. It was their throw everything at the wall attitude that made it so that it was all over the place. God, but now we know. Now we know how to correctly make these games. It took everybody but Sonic Team to realize it, but... Are you trying to say the Sonic Team doesn't learn from their mistakes? I can't just give up. I've got to hone my skills. Filter out what doesn't work and figure out what does. I've got to get my friend. Uh. Oh. My friend. Rip It Win It is back at Chuck E. Cheese's. You can win a Sonic Forces console bundle or your very own gaming center. Plus tickets and play pass points. Every cup is a winner with over $27 million in prizes at Chuck E. Cheese's. You did what? So Sonic Team decided that Classic Sonic's next inclusion would be yet another crossover with Modern Sonic. Why they thought that'd be a good idea right away is beyond me. But I'm not the one making the games, so let's get into it. So Sonic Forces isn't the worst Sonic game. 
far be it, but I'd be lying if I didn't mention that it was fairly mediocre, coming from the not-so-indie studio with Sonic Team. After Classic Sonic was yoinked from the end of Sonic Mania with the Phantom Ruby, he ends up tangled in the mess with Modern Eggman's global takeover. Anyways, Modern Sonic, Classic Sonic, and your very own Sonic RC take on Eggman and save the day as usual. The game could be better, but again, that's a discussion for the eventual 3D Sonic video. Classic Sonic only has 4 levels and I think 2 bosses, in a game that's about 30 stages. Lackluster compared to the other two characters getting the rest of them. But whatever, if you enjoyed the Classic Sonic stages from Generations, it's more of the stage. But at least Classic Sonic gets to fight the Egg Dragoon this time. I do want to bring up that the worst part of the final Classic Sonic stage, where for some reason they decided to give Classic Sonic an auto-scroller. I can't imagine why they thought this would be a good idea, because this section absolutely blows. Auto-scrolling works for the airplane sections in Sonic 2 and Mania because you cannot fall off. This is just awful because I'm standing around trying to platform with Classic Sonic's awkward, slippy controls. Sonic, Sonic, and not Sonic beat Eggman and put a stop to his plans as expected. The Phantom Ruby is destroyed and Classic Sonic fades away. I don't know how this gets him back to his dimension, but whatever. However, Sonic Forces is an okay game, and compared to the rest of the series, it's one of the best. Which is... which is... which is just awful. How am I happy today? Hi, could I get two McChickens, please? Actually, could I get three McChickens? Richard, there you are. Have you brought lunch? I have. Excellent. Come have a seat. Can I get you some condiments? We have ketchup, mustard, strawberry jam, mayo. Uh, Richard? You, uh, you okay, buddy? What? Never mind. You did it, my child. You fulfilled the 90s dream. I always believed in you. Look at me, I'm like some kind of like Star Wars ghost. <laughs> I never really remember to lock my doors. You got anything to eat? So, Classic Sonic as a whole gives me a whole mess of mixed feelings. With the exception of Sonic Blast, and I guess 8-Bit Sonic 2, they're all decently well-made games. I'd say that for most of them, everyone would have a good experience playing. Of course, the standout titles are 2, CD, and 3. Those games are exceptionally good experiences. And with Tails Adventures and Knuckles Chaotix, getting huge props for being both innovative and impressive. The big problem I had with this project is that many reviewers fall into the trend of pointing out that Sonic games were never good and that you had to spend so much time going extremely slow, defeating the point of even going fast. Then the other half of the reviewers argue that going fast is intended and that you need to take your time to learn the stages over and over again so that you know exactly when each slicer is going to give you a kiss. Even the manuals per se Sonic CD mentioned this, telling you to slow down and memorize the game. And I get it, it does give more depth to the game. But I didn't really enjoy playing at a snail's pace, and many kids may very well only have that game to play over and over. I certainly spent many years in Sonic and Knuckles trying to beat Mushroom Hill Zone with my keyboard, but I didn't really enjoy playing at a snail's pace. I didn't always enjoy the stage design or the platforming. These games weren't the most fun to me, and I'm not super excited to revisit these anytime soon. But, Burnout Be Damned, I think overall I've gained a lot from this trip. This is why I like to play every title in a series. I love to see the highest highs and the lowest lows. It's like I'm getting another gaming experience as a whole. 
I get to see everything along the way. And that's why it can bite so much when you play something as beloved as CD and see how much goes wrong in Chaotix. This series has shown so much personality as it's evolved. So much innovation. So much of an expanding world. So much of Robotnik getting thrashed by that horrid little hedgehog. And while I have no desire to go back and learn each and every facet of Metallic Madness, I also pull up that amazing soundtrack that this series is known for. Unfortunately, we're gonna be with the Blue Rat a little bit longer, as I'm still slowly picking away at the 3D titles. I think that should go better. I'm much more versed in those games, and I think I'll be more able to write my impressions in depth. I don't know when that'll be done, but uh, <laughs> welcome to Sonic. Hey, so real quick, I need to thank my super cool friends. A lot of these projects come out of my pocket, but I'd never finish without their help. Bob is my super funny voice actor friend that played the part of the 90s ghost in this video. He's been in my projects before, and I'm glad he still puts up with me. He streams on Twitch, has a large TikTok following, and is even in a few video games. I'll leave a link to his stuff below. Rick is another good friend that starred as our washed up Sonic fanboy. He's been helping me with the 3D Sonic titles and will have a larger role in that project. He streams very often on Twitch and will also be below. Jeremy's my buddy who comes over to game when we're not busy. In this project, he played Rick's landlord slash benefactor, as well as being my audio man when filming. Lastly, I gotta thank the friends I showed this project along the way. A lot of my ideas don't make it all the way through, and I'm glad I have people to look over my work. I'll try to make progress with the next piece soon. This has been Saffron. Thanks for listening.